Hello everyone, hope you are learning well. So in this video, we'll discuss the last problem of lead code weekly contest 363. Uh, it's a hard level problem, but I would say uh, it's a very interesting problem. Uh, it, it, it involves some observation and some a basic mathematic, uh, you know, a, a basic mathematical thing. Uh, but overall, yeah, it's a very good problem to solve. Okay, just one observation and you'll make this problem will be very easy, not a hard problem. Okay, so let's see what this problem is asking us to do. The problem name is maximum element sum of a complete subset of indices. Okay, so you are given a one indexed array nums of n integers. A set of numbers is complete if the product of every pair of its element is a perfect square. Okay, for a subset of of the indices set one two dot 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 till n represented as i one i two dot 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 till k. That means these are the indices indices are starting from one to n now you select some indices from it okay we define its element sum as uh, you know sum of elements add those indices nums of i1 nums of i2 nums of i3 and add till nums of i k okay return the maximum element sum of a complete subset of the indices set this a perfect square is a number that can be expressed as the product of an integer okay let's see what it is asking us to do it is saying you have an array okay this is an array and the indices are represented from one to n now you have to select some elements from it maybe all but you have to select a subset of elements such that choose those indices for example if you choose index number one three and seven something like this okay what we have to do suppose you choose these index so it should follow a property which property this set should be complete this index set should be complete. Now, what do we mean by complete? It means that if you pick any two pairs that you have chosen and you multiply it, it should be a perfect square, right? It should be a perfect square. Like in this case, one, three, three, seven, and one, seven. When you multiply these individually, they should be perfect square. Obviously, it is not the case in this, in this example that I've taken, but this is what you have to do. Now, if the set is complete set. So what you will do? You will add the elements at these indices. Add nums of 1, nums of 3 and nums of 7. So doing this, generate the subsets and you know, return the maximum uh, element sum of a complete set that you can get. Right? Problem statement is simple. This is an array. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. These are the 8 indices, right? So now what I'll do? Uh, let's pick Suppose in this case, I pick seven, this and this. So first, let's see what are the indices we can pick, right? Uh, that's the main thing. So if I choose index number one, what are the other elements can I choose, right? So can I choose two? Can I choose index number two? No, because one into two is two, which is not a perfect square. If you choose three, one three is also not valid. What about one four? One four is valid, right? One four is valid because one into four is four, which is a perfect square. Now. This is a subset. Remember, a subset can have other elements as well. In this case, I'm just following a greedy approach to show you how it works, right? And, and if you see, you cannot multiply any other number with one, with one. That means if you try to form a subset, you will be able to form a subset of only two elements in this case. So that is one and four. Now let's add the numbers at index number one. That is eight. What's the number at index number four? That is five. It comes out to be 13. Okay. Let's check for other possibilities. Suppose I choose the index two. So can I choose three? No, two into three is six. Can I choose four? Two into four is eight, not a perfect square. Two into five, not a perfect square. Two into six, not a perfect square. Two into seven, no. Two into eight, it's a perfect square because this is 16. So that this is four, right? And what are the elements at index number two and four? It is seven, sorry, two and eight. It is seven and nine, that is 16. So you got two subsets. One was giving you a sum of 13. One was giving you a sum of eight, 16. So 16 is your answer, simple, right? Let's see for this case, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. So obviously a single element will form a valid uh, subset, right? So forget about that, right? But now let's again choose, suppose I choose one, what are the elements I can choose? I can choose index number four. Great. Uh, any other, any other index, index that I can choose? So I can choose something like, I can choose 1, 4, 9 as well, right? I can choose one, four, nine. Okay. So this is the second set. 
आई कैन चूज फोर एंड नाइन राइट आई कैन चूज फोर एंड नाइन नाउ अगेन सिमिलर टू वॉट आई डिड बिफोर यू कैन डू समथिंग लाइक दिस यू कैन चूज टू एंड एट सो आई थिंक दीज आर दी पॉसिबल वन राइट वन फोर वन नाइन टू एट फोर नाइन गेस यप this is and obviously you can choose one nine as well but obviously this is a super set right so that's why okay what's the answer in this case index number 1 is 5 plus 10 what is 149 it is 5 plus 10 plus 4 all right what is 4 and 9 this is 10 plus 4 what is this 2 plus 8 that is 10 plus 9 right Plus eight, yeah, ten plus nine, and what is one and nine? It is five plus four. So what is the maximum sum? This is nineteen. This is also nineteen. These are smaller than nineteen. So nineteen is your answer. Okay. Remember, you have to choose the indices, and indices should form not the elements at those indices. Rather, the indices should form a complete set. Remember, these are indices, not the elements. And once those indices are forming a complete set, then you add the element as though at those indices, right? This is what the problem is asking us to do. I hope now this is very much clear. Now, if I talk about the number of elements that I can have, it is ten raised to the power four. Each element can be ten raised to the power nine. Okay. So now let's again go to some observations. Okay. Some observations. Forget about other elements. Suppose I have perfect squares. What are perfect squares? One, four, nine, sixteen, twenty-five, and so on. Right. Now, if you have perfect square, what happens? If you multiply two perfect squares. That will also be a perfect square, right? Getting it? So, like for example, this is four, this is nine. If you multiply four and nine, you get thirty-six. That is also a perfect square. Acha, why you are getting a perfect square? Because obviously, this is two into two. This is three into three. Getting it? So obviously, choose one from this, one from this. You will again get a perfect square only. Getting it? And what is my aim? If I choose a subset. Every pair that I form, that should be a perfect square. So at any particular point of time, you'll be choosing only two elements, right? You'll be choosing only two elements because if you choose four, nine, nine, this will not be like. There will be cases when it's not a perfect square, but ultimately you have to choose a set where every pair forms a perfect square, right? So what I mean to say, if this is the case, it's very easy. But if it if this is not the case, then what happens? Then If a number is not a perfect square, then it will be in other format. What can be that format? Suppose a number is twenty-four, right? So twenty-four can be represented as two into two. This is twelve, six. This, this is how twenty-four can be represented, right? Now, if I try to remove remove the terms which are forming perfect square in this, for example, this and this, or rather, I would say if you divide it by four, getting it. So what happens now? You are left with two and three. That is six. So this means that whatever is the leftover value, whatever is the residual value, that cannot be divided by any perfect square. Okay. So that means for any element, just factorize it. Okay. So uh, literally, you do not will not be factorizing it, but I am showing you for any number. If you factorize it, if you remove the elements which are forming perfect square, let me show you one more example. Suppose there is a factorization like this: two into two into two. And three into three, uh, yeah, something like this. Then what happens? These two form a pair. These two form a pair. That means, acha, what is this number? Eight, eight into nine. That is seventy-two, right? So in seventy-two, what happens? You can divide it by four. You get eighteen. You can divide it by nine. Finally, you get two. So finally, you get two. Okay. So what I mean to say, any number can be represented like this. A number can be represented by A perfect square into a number x. This x is the residual value. Like for example, in this case it is six. In this case, case it is two. Okay. Now, if you are trying to form a subset, right? If you are trying to form a subset, what will happen? What will happen? If you have to choose another number, which when multiplied by this number gives a perfect square, then what will happen? This is perfect square one. This is a number x. If you choose another number which is perfect square two, so what happens? If you multiply those two numbers, what you will get? Suppose uh, the for n one is. Let me write it like this. N one is perfect square one into residual value x one. Number is n two perfect square two into residual value x two. If you multiply them and you want a perfect square, what happens? N one into n two will give you perfect square one into perfect square two into x one into x two. These are sorted. these are forming perfect square 
but ultimately these two should combine to form a perfect square and when they will form a perfect square when x1 and x2 are equal right like for example if this is 6 so i need another 6 na? so that they form they these two also combine to form a perfect square now these two individually were perfect square so they are sorted right these these do not create any problems only the residual values are something that we need to take care okay so what i mean to say any number can be represented in the form of perfect square and some residual value now this residual value in case of perfect square will be one for example for four it will be four into one nine is nine into one i'm just trying to generalize the things okay so now what will happen if i want to form a subset of this number n1 let's call it n1 then i can only choose the i can form it i can form a subset of this number with only the numbers whose residual value is sec, is x right for example that means if you form a subset so you can form a subset of only the numbers having the same residual value so that when you choose any two numbers this will also have residual value x x x x so if you do choose any number ultimately this x and x will give you a perfect square simple that is what we need to do so if i take the case of 24 this its residual value is 6 now if i want to form a perfect square of this guy i need another number whose whose residual value is 26 uh, sorry 6 so suppose that number is 6 only suppose you have two numbers 24 and 6 so you can multiply these two numbers to form a perfect square because this is perfect number 1 into 6 this is perfect number 2 into 6 here perfect is um, 4 here perfect 2 is 1 okay this is 6 this is 6 this form perfect square this 2 multiplied form perfect square simple okay so for every number just calculate the residual value um, and what do you have to do you have to just keep a track of that okay what are the sum of values i get for this particular residual value simple you can use a map for that right for example for residual value 6 these are the sum of elements in my array 7 these are the sum of elements so this can be done by using a map right integer is the residual value long is the sum of elements at those corresponding indices okay i hope the solution is clear let's see a very small code that is why i said this is a very i won't say an easy problem but a tricky one you just have to write that using a pen and paper and trust me that this it becomes a very easy problem okay so j equals to zero j less than nums of size j plus plus remember i have to form a subset of indices which are starting from one so that is why what is my current number whose residual value i want to find index plus one because indexing is starting from one right now how do you find the residual value i starts from two i square is less than current i plus plus that means whatever is your this value is right try to divide it, it with perfect squares keep on dividing it with perfect square like for example 24 right? divided by what's the first perfect square like apart from one that is four so if this is divisible right so keep on dividing it by four keep on dividing by four because maybe your actual number is not 24 it is um suppose 96 okay so what do you do you divide it by four you get 24 you can again divide it by four so that is why if it is divisible if the current number is divisible by the current square while it is divisible just keep on dividing it just keep on dividing it and once you complete this loop this current value will have the residual value okay so just do that map dot put current value if there is uh, there are some uh, there are already some elements present uh, so in that just add the sum of the current element add else add the current number with zero simple okay then answer equals to math dot answer and uh, the the new is the the new element sum that you got for the current residual value because in the current iteration you are changing the sum of only the current residual residual value right so that's why you just need to keep a track of this and finally you return the answer okay so this is how you solve this problem whenever you get a problem related to uh, you know uh, perfect square or something like that just try to divide that problem by factorizing it once you use a use a pen and paper to factorize the actual number uh, right uh, the observations become very easy that's how i approach the problem however today i was not able to give the contest um but yeah i solved it after the contest and uh, trust me it was relatively easy much easier than the other level four problems that you get right uh, so yeah that's it for the solution i hope you learned something new from this video do support it by giving up a thumbs up do subscribe to the channel as well in case you have any queries related to the solution or you have any other solutions in your mind mention that in the comment section i'll revert on each one of them thank you take care bye bye